Saro Saro Congo na we wa. 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 Saro we. Saro we. Sorry. I must apologize if this pathetic attempt at a storytelling spoken word poem don't rhyme. But sometimes, metaphors hide behind the similes, leaving me leaning head first pressed against the bark of a tree. Blindfoldedly dreaming of words to describe. Every Nigerian's a frame of mind, the transformation of broken English into this Canadian disaster of an accent accentuated by the uh, my met pulled me a couple years ago through the slam scene. Um, I was amazed and floored by his his talent, his agility, his stamina on stage, um, but also his content. So over the past couple years, we've grown together as artists. Um, we're talking about various issues, but you know we like to touch um, about back home a lot. We like to talk about Africa and and the issues that are going on there. Exaggerated pronunciation of every word at the tip of my tongue has left me tongue tied and. Dehydratedly dried and dying inside every time I try to tie ten dollars to my debit card and deposit nine point five liters of bloodstained petroleum just into the gas chamber of my two thousand and two four Taurus. You can call me, call me Horus, though. Comey has been a uh, a wonderful um, beacon and, uh, and 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 trademark for individuals who want to speak about Africa um, and, and and particularly West Africa and the issues that are going on in that community. Nigerian holographical symbol exposing the horrors though. Truth to be for us, before us came. Royal show Dutch workers in luxurious buses, not buzzing through the Niger Delta area like a bunch of disoriented tourists patrolling the Ogoni land in search of natural resources. They took their drills and their high-tech tricks of technology and pumped our ancestors out the ground. This time around, they built refineries to refine ways to pass our forefathers through their pipeline. I, I think he's a powerful voice, um, a wonderful leader for our generation, and the guy is mad talented. I mean, this guy is an artist in every sense of the word, visual, spoken, uh, and even just his his uh, his aura and his his attitude and and his and his and his mentality uh, is artistic and poetically. So you know, Comey's not just a, a paper poet; he he lives it as well. He lives poetry. He's a poet's poet. My name is Comey Olafemihan, also known as Poetic Speed. And uh, I'm from Kaduna, Nigeria. Born and raised. Yeah. <laughs> As a Nigerian in Canada, already, like, they are already. Um, so many misconceptions and, and stereotypes that have already been attached to Nigeria before I even got here. You know, I personally did not experience any of those things until about three or four years ago where I was, uh, I was working on a project for, for someone out in, uh, in Greeley, like a, a house renovation or something. And I went with my, my partner and he's, he's like French Canadian, you know? And we get there and uh, we're sitting down, we're talking about the project and this guy's so excited about, about the project and then out of nowhere he just, he decides to ask me where I'm from, you know? And you know, I, I know already where he's going with that question and, um, but I'm, I'm not one to deny where I'm from so I'm like, straight up, I'm, I'm from Nigeria. And all of a sudden you can see the change in his posture and uh you know his body language is already getting like you know wondering what's going on if i'm trying to like you know scam him off of his renovation you know and then that that really sparked something to me and we we had a serious discussion and i was telling him that you know it's like you know you can't you can't stereotype a whole bunch of people out of you know a, a given fraction so a lot of my work has been focused in like educating um 
or attempting to educate because I'm learning myself right attempting to educate people about um, about the, the positivity the, the positive the positive things about Nigerian people Nigerians and Nigeria as a whole I got a woman way over town that's good to me oh yeah say I got a woman way over town good to me oh yeah she give me money when I'm in need The challenges I face for art are um, in terms of like my last show, which was basically um, African oriented art. I found that um, a lot of galleries would not take my stuff. They wouldn't uh, accept my, my, my art basically, like not because it wasn't good art, but because of the topic of what I was painting. Like um, this one art manager was able to tell me that the whole reason why he wouldn't take my art is because uh, he finds that the, 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 the content of the painting, a lot of Canadians, his market base, would not be able to connect with the paintings, so they wouldn't buy it. So he, he wanted me to paint flowers and uh, I wouldn't paint flowers because I feel like there's a lot more going on in the world and flowers, flowers are nice, but like, I feel like uh, art, art is a very powerful tool and uh, there's messages that need to be passed on through art. Kay, her name is Kay, born in 1947 Moscow. Her father Mikhail was a soldier with the USSR Army once a week. He would take his daughter to the ballet. She loved how her father would hold her in his hand. She enjoyed listening to the feet of the dancers as they patterned to the rhythm of the melody, like ba 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 ba. This this the poem is actually written by my teammate uh, Ian Keriko, where the whole poem is about um, is about a woman. We talk about it like it's a woman throughout the whole poem and then towards the end you find out that the woman is actually an AK-47. Her beauty, undeniable. She was long, strong, and powerful. Her skin glowed under the sun with remarkable beauty and glistened in accordance with the stars by moonlight. As she grew, she became the lust of many men. They loved the way she felt in their hands, the way she made them feel safe, the way she made them feel like men. And Kay loved them back. So it's like her story about how she was born in Russia and then she moved to Africa and, you know, ended up in the hands of like, whatever, the wrong people. It's a nice poem, so it'll be interesting. If you show up, it'll be good, you know? Because <laughs> when they held her, she was reminded of the Moscow Ballet and how the feet of the dancers padded to the rhythm of the melody, like, ba, 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 ba. Kay loves to travel. She visited many of the churches of Germany, the villages of Finland, the temples of China, and the caves of Afghanistan. But once she landed in Africa, she was home. She was at peace with the heat. The red soil beneath her feet made her feel loved, and the men showed her an affection she had never known. She was with the most powerful African men, really silly reptilian Nigerian men who willy-nilly stiffened and siphoned 40 billion from Nigerian civilians. She had a fair with the poorest of boys who clung to her like a teddy bear. Young, Congolese children with no vision, who with precision decision caused division by stealing United Nations food provisions. But Kay got carried away, allowed herself to be taken advantage of. You see, they didn't love her like she loved them. They loved her body in the way she made them feel powerful. Like men, all she longed for were the times when they would stroke her neck as she sang to the rhythm of the Moscow Ballet, like ba 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 ba. I think he's somebody to watch. I think he's going to be here for many years. I think he's a trailblazer, um, and the bottom line is he's going to be making a contribution not only to people of African descent but to a larger extent to. 
world harmony and, and, and a greater purpose through art, through music, and through his gifted sense of, uh, of uh, expression. She would do anything to be reminded of the Moscow Ballet. She will fall into the hands of the world's most dangerous men. She will kill for it. And in fact, she did. Rwanda, Uganda, Somalia, Ethiopia, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Millions died from the touch of her lips. Kane, AKA Kalishnikov, named after her daddy, Mikhail Kalishnikov, born in 1947. Kane, AKA AK-47, that kiss from her lips would send you to heaven. Brothers Russia just to hold her. A distalling when they see her, but all bow as she sings to the rhythm of the Moscow Ballet, like. Well, there's five of us in our family. There's my dad, my mom, my older brother, and my sister. When we were young, they used to call us uh, KKJ because <laughs> my brother's name is Casey, I'm Komi, and my sister's name is uh, Jetty. So my brother is actually uh, the inspiration for a lot of, uh, it's like, it's the little voice that speaks to me <laughs> and then it comes out. So like once a week we sit down at Tim Hortons and, and we, we have all these discussions which 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 um which come out through my paintings and my poetry and um and my sister is like uh she she's like <laughs> she's like a driving force so we actually work together um komi is very artistic when it comes to his mind it's not just a matter of visual arts like he paints we all know that it's beautiful but when it comes to how his mind works it's very artistic and that comes out when he does spoken word and the good thing about his pieces are they're not just regular things that you talk about every day most of the time when you hear poetry it's almost saturated they're talking about the same thing every time but with Kwame he takes it to a different dimension to a different level he makes you understand he teaches you in his in what he says and he does it in a very entertaining and very engaging manner because you know his name goes his uh, words come out really fast but you still understand what he's saying